The hunt is on. There's no going back now. It's in your blood. A primal need that must be met. It drives you. It consumes you. It takes you to the edge. What was once a simple pastime has now become your addiction. This season, come share the excitement with a group of fellow whitetail addicts from Lone Wolf. Learn from their time-tested techniques, as well as their mistakes, and be there to experience firsthand the highs and the lows we've all come to thrive on. They are do-it-yourselfers just like you. Their season begins the moment the last one ends. And when it comes time to release an arrow, they come up big. This is Whitetail Addiction. Wow, what a cage. Hi, my name's Mike Rainier. I live in Central Ohio. I started bow hunting whitetails when I was 17 years old. Uh, I started taking the camera woods me a couple years after that. I would say I was around 19, and I successfully uh, self-filmed my first um, mature whitetail when I was 20 years old. Um, and ever since then, I mean, I've, a camera's been a part of who I am, and uh, I definitely, you know, a huge part of my equipment list going into the timber. So today, I'm talking about the hunt for Big Southie. It started in uh, 2018, the hunt for Big Southie. Um, I purchased my second um, my second piece of ground in uh, actually south like southern Ohio. I closed on the farm. I got some cameras out, um, and then a few days later, I actually left for my Kansas trip. Well, my second day on the trip, I started getting some pictures um, from my cell camera. And one of the first bucks I had on camera was a a, a really nice six by five, a deer I thought that might have been close to 170, somewhere in that 60s, maybe 170 mark. Didn't have a name for him yet. But, but was pretty excited about, um, you know, the potential of that deer. Uh. Fast forward to 2019, um, in the spring, my main focus was to find Big Southie's core area where he lived, where he spent most of his time, and hopefully pick up some of his sheds. Out here just doing a little scouting, um, found some rubs um, that I think is from Big Southie, a deer that I had on camera this year. And I put some effort in killing him towards the end of the season, and then I actually killed another, another buck um, up off this ridge about 150 yards from here. But, I knew Big Southie um, lived in this area, um, and this just kind of proves a little bit some of his rubs and some of his whereabouts. So I found a good a good uh, rub line going through here. There's three or four rubs. There's another one about this size, but but you can tell he spent a lot of his life here. Um, there's a huge doe bedding area right here. I think he bedded just outside of it. So. Saturday open day bow season um, here, here in Ohio. We're at front of farm here in southern Ohio. Um, it's 90 degrees, so it's really, really hot, but uh, we'll, we got a big deer walking during daylight, so um, we got really good wind. It's pushing out of the south, southwest. It's good to hunt this set. So we're actually gonna be, uh, let me get my bearings. Got fingers straight over my head. Um, so we got a good deer coming out of there um, in that bottom and actually goes down to the creek come on that bottom feeding and he's feeding right past that point and then um, all up here is all the all the hay fields I'm standing in you, you, you can see all the hay all around there's a green field over there so these deer are uh, coming out of these bottoms um, working these points and then heading out to these hay fields so 
I've been glassing this deer and I got a bunch of videos and um, a lot of lone wolf custom gear videos of him and uh, I've been I've been doing a bunch of glass and I call him the bladed 10 he's a big 160 inch kind of deer um, man if, if he does if he if he does what he did last night and, and the night before he's on, he's he's in some serious trouble so I almost didn't come in tonight because of how hot it is but you can see I mean I got my electric bike here so I'm all set up for the hunt. October the 25th. Stakes don't get any higher than this tonight. My target deer, my number one target deer this year, Big Southie on this food plot yesterday at 7 p.m. The first time he's been daylight in, uh, I don't know, a few weeks. Three weeks, probably. Um, he's been real sporadic when he's been here. Last year, he lived his whole life here. I just think there's uh, an acorn flat that he can't get enough of or something like that. As of last night, he's back in his uh, back in his core area. today okay I did some scouting found a couple of new scrapes and I normally like to put a undercover game camera on them to see what bucks are using them there were some pretty big rubs along this trail so I thought it might be one of the two big ones I'm after um, but we burned up a day here now sitting in these scrapes and we've seen the bachelor group that's using them not to say the big one won't be through uh, but it looked like to me that that first one that came in, uh, it's probably his primary. So normally we like to put a camera out first, uh, but I decided to jump in here. Um, once you locate a big one on a scrape, and you know that's his, obviously that's probably the one you want to be sitting over. The next opportunity I had to hunt, um, I had I had two days of vacation coming up. I had Thursday and Friday, which was the 7th and 8th, and then I was going to hunt the 9th and 10th as well, Saturday and Sunday, then head back to work on Monday. So I knew I, I had a good four-day window where I could do some all-day sits during prime time. Um, when I knew Big South, he actually showed some vulnerability. He actually, the year before, he was daylight a few days, the end of October, and then the 7th through the 10th. I believe every night, if not almost every night, he was daylight, um, you know, you know, bumping does. So uh, I, I knew I had a really good opportunity um, during during that small window to get a crack at him. So my goal was, was to come back down and do uh, three to four all-day sits. I mean, whatever it took to either get it done on that buck or, um, you know, go go back to work on Monday and out killing the deer. 
Now, the other part of the equation was I had a good friend um, from Wisconsin that was coming in town to hunt with me. Um, he was going to be there. Um, his first day to hunt was uh, Saturday the 9th. My buddy's deer out of the woods this morning, Jeremy, and um, now we're back at it. So, uh, set the stage a little bit. We were hunting, uh, I've been hunting Big Southie. Haven't seen him. He's been on my food plot, my corn pot at night. Um, I've been hunting transition areas. I've, I've been hunting where I thought his bedroom was. I've been hunting in and out of these uh, pretty big, I've been hunting in and out of these pretty big uh, bedding areas. Um, just to try to catch his buck, and man, I've just not been having any luck. I've not seen him, but I know he's around. Jeremy went in this morning, uh, 9.30, killed his buck on a ridge over on the north side property. Um, killed his buck, a good buck, 150 inch, 10 pointer. Killed that deer, then 15, 20 minutes later, uh, the deer I called Big Southie, strolls by him at 35 yards. So he texts me, lets me know what the situation, I meet him over there. Uh, we get his, luckily his buck jumped the fence, died in a drainage um, on a farm we have access to. Um, and uh, that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm over here at this property right now. I'm actually waiting to go back in. I got about a uh, half, uh, half mile trek.
shot the biggest deer of my life. He is a for sure 180, 190 inch buck. So I'm trying to gain my composure right now. I'm just so sick of myself right now. I can't tell the story. Literally under my stand. And I shoot him in the freaking hind quarters. I pray to God I can find this deer. My initial thought was I hit too far back. Um, so, I mean, I, I was pretty upset with myself. Um, the deer runs off. I, I see him lay down. He actually crashed. He got back up, and I, see, I saw him crash again. I didn't see any more movement at that point. It was really thick over there. I mean, my footage when I turned the camera over, I mean, wasn't, wasn't very good. Um, I mean, as far as my reaction, I was pretty upset. Um, I thought I just blew it on the biggest deer of my life. Um, and I could actually look down below my stand and see the blood on the ground. So I wanted to get down, check out that blood, and then my, my instinct told me to get out of there, get the heck out of there, watch the footage on, on a big TV, get a better understanding of, of what I'm dealing with, um, and then you know go in there in the morning and hopefully recover that deer. So I started heading out of the timber, but for some reason I actually stopped and uh, turned around and um, was looking back to where I last saw him, and I saw my lighted knock sitting there. And what I thought was a deer still connected to my arrow. And um, so I put my pack down, got my binos on, sure enough, at the end of that arrow was Big Southie laying there. And I, I could not believe my eyes that he was still laying there. Um, and that, you know, he, he, he could see me if he was alive at that point. So I, I figured he, you know, I figured he was laying there dead with my arrow. And I took my binoculars and I looked and, and I saw him laying there dead. So that's been probably about a half hour, maybe 45 minutes ago. <laughs> oh my gosh, man, give, give me a high five, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, here he is. Deer I call Big Southie. A two-year quest for this deer. Um, bought my farm last year, and he was one of the first bucks I had on camera, actually. Last year he was just a uh, mainframe six by five, and he didn't have he didn't have the points he does this year. But he was still a really good deer. I thought, I mean, just just looking at him, I thought he's at least four or five year old kind of deer. Had really, really, really good mass. Um, saw him twice from the tree. I actually killed my buck um, uh, December fifth last year in pursuit of this one. But I killed another nice buck that showed up up on the farm, and then um, so this deer got to live. Uh, fast forward to spring. Found his bedding area, uh, found some, you know, a huge rub line he made probably around this time last year, uh, October or even this time, and um, never found his shed. I mean, I searched high and low for that. Um, actually, Jeremy's with me now. He, he, he came in from Wisconsin, and um, we, I mean, we looked for his sheds, couldn't find them, but, you know, but we got a lot figured out on the farm as far as that goes, and we actually have a couple leases close by. Not only is Big Southie uh, my biggest scoring buck today at 192 inches, but he is definitely my most accomplished, um, probably buck I'm the most proud of. Hi, this is Andre Cristo from Lone Wolf Custom Gear. I wanted to thank you for watching Whitetail Addictions and ask that you become one of our silent partners by hitting the YouTube subscribe button and following us on Facebook and Instagram.